Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to provide you an overview of Azure SQL Database. SQL Database, as you are aware, it's a flagship product of Microsoft in database area. It's a general purpose relational database that supports structures like relational data, JSON, spatial, and XML. And Microsoft is basically offering SQL Database on cloud. But the big difference is Azure platform fully manages every Azure SQL Database and guarantees no data loss and high percentage of data availability. So basically, Azure automatically handles patching, backups, replication, failover detection, underlying potential hardware, software, or network failures, deploying bug fixes, database upgrades, and other maintenance tasks. So you can imagine how much Azure will take care of it if you deploy SQL database on Azure. And in terms of platform as a service offerings in SQL database area, there are three ways you can deploy your SQL database. First one is managed instance. This is primarily targeted towards on-premises customers. In case if you already have a SQL Server instance in your on-premises data center and you want to migrate that into Azure with minimum changes to your applications and maximum compatibility, then you go for managed instance. Anyway, I'm going to further explain about managed instance in its own lecture. And the second thing is single database. You can deploy a single database on Azure with its own set of resources managed via logical server. And you have elastic pool, which is basically you can deploy pool of databases with shared set of resources managed via logical server. Again, what is this logical server? What is this elastic pool? I'm going to explain in a bit more detail in the further part of this lecture. Okay. And finally, if you want to deploy SQL database as infrastructure as a service, that means you want to deploy SQL server on your Azure virtual machine, you can do that also. But in that case, you are responsible for managing SQL server on that particular Azure virtual machine. And I have provided a link to comparison of different types of deployment models in the resource section of this lecture. I think it is very important for you to go through the same and understand the differences at minute detail. Okay. And the next thing is purchasing models. There are two ways you can purchase SQL Server on Azure. First one is vCore purchasing model. This is relatively new when compared to DTU based model. In vCore based purchasing model, you can independently scale compute and storage resources, match on premises performance and optimize the price. It also enables you to choose generation of the hardware. And in case if you already hold SQL Server licenses within your on-premises data center, then you can get the benefit of Azure hybrid benefit for SQL Server to gain the cost savings. So it is best for customers who already have a SQL Server on-premise and also who want flexibility, control and transparency. Okay. And the second model is DTU based model. Here, you can't independently choose compute and storage. It's a bundled measure of compute and storage and IO resources. So compute sizes are measured in terms of database transaction units. And if you go for elastic pools, it is measured as elastic database transaction units. Each transaction unit represents an amount of compute storage and IO resources. Okay. So you don't independently choose them. So if you are a startup company, and you want SQL database, then go for this because you don't need to worry about configuration and all those stuff. You select, let's say 10 DTUs and start working on it. At one point of time, you can increase the number of DTUs also. So it is best for customers who want simple and pre-configured resource options. Again, I provided a link to comparison of types of purchasing models in the resource section of this lecture. Please go through the same. And the next thing is service types. Each purchasing model will have service types under it. In vCore purchasing model, they are called as general purpose, business critical and hyperscale service types. And when it comes to DTU model, they're called as standard premium service type. And there is something called basic also in DTU model. So let's go through some of them. First one is general purpose or standard model it is based on separation of compute and storage. So basically the underlying architecture model relies on high availability and reliability of Azure premium storage that transparently replicates database files and guarantees no data loss if the underlying infrastructure failure happens. Basically, the compute, the database engine will be on a separate node and storage will be on a separate node. Okay. 
that's how the general purpose standard model architecture looks like if you really see the underlying things and when it comes to business critical slash premium service tier model it's based on cluster of database engine processes in this case both the sql database engine process and the underlying database files will be placed on the same node with a locally attached ssd storage basically the advantage of having both of them on the same node is it have very very low latency so if you have a huge io intensive workloads then this is the model you should go for ideally okay and in terms of high availability it is implemented using technology similar to sql server always on availability groups so when you compare general purpose our standard model with business critical or premium service tier model there is bit of difference in the underlying architecture in the case of general purpose the sql database engine will be on a separate node from the storage but when it comes to business critical or premium service tier model both the database engine process and the database file will be on the same node and finally we have hyperscale service tier basically it's a newest service tier that is available in vcore based purchasing model it is in preview i think when i'm making this lecture this service tier is a highly scalable storage and compute performance tier that leverages the azure architecture to scale out storage and compute resources for an azure sql database substantially beyond the limits of general purpose and business critical service tiers so unless you are working for a fortune 500 company i believe it is unlikely you go with hyperscale service tier because it's it's huge basically so most of the time you will be working with general purpose and standard model or business critical or premium service tier okay and the next thing i want to discuss is i have mentioned two terms one is logical server and elastic pool so let me go through that sql database logical server within azure a logical server acts as a central administration point for multiple single or pool databases logins firewalls auditing rules threat detection policies and firewall groups so this logical server is a container it's like a administrative wrapper around your single database or pool databases okay and obviously before you create azure sql database logical server must exist and all databases on a server are created within the same region as the logical server and you might be thinking this might be equivalent of sql server in on premise but it's not because sql database service makes no guarantee regarding the location of the databases in relation to their logical servers and more importantly you don't have instant level access or features so basically you can't access the underlying instance on which this logical server sits so keep a note of it and as i said it's like a parent resource for all the databases elastic pools and even data warehouse also so if you are going for sql data warehouse again you will create a logical server first and deploy a sql data warehouse under that logical server and finally elastic pools sql database elastic pools are a simple cost effective solution for managing and scaling multiple databases that have varying and unpredictable usage demands the databases in an elastic pool are on a single azure sql database server and share a set number of resources at a set price so for example let's say you have a b c databases a consumes 1000 dtus in january that's the maximum time that it consumes and b consumes 1000 dtus in let's say july during the summer and c consumes maximum uh, units when it is december during christmas period let's say instead of buying 1000 dtus for a 1000 dtus for b and 1000 dtus for c you can aggregate and buy 1500 e dtus elastic pool dtus and deploy all these three databases into the elastic pool so basically at any one point of time only one database is consuming maximum power and even at that level also you can fine tune so within elastic pool you can configure in such a way this particular database let's say a database should not exceed beyond 1000 dtu so that the remaining 500 dtus are available for b and c similarly b should not exceed certain dtus so you can configure in that way also so basically the biggest saving is instead of buying 3000 dtus you are actually buying 1500 dtus 
So you are essentially saving 50% of the cost with elastic pools. Okay. And you can configure resources for the pool based either on the DTU purchasing model or V core based purchasing model. And the best size of the pool depends upon the aggregated resources needed for all databases in the pool. Basically, this involves determining two parameters. First parameter is maximum resources utilized by all databases in the pool. And the second thing is maximum storage bytes utilized by all databases in the pool. So basically you aggregate the resources and purchase that resources rather than individually purchasing the resources for individual databases. In case if you don't understand, don't worry about it. We have a lab on it where I'm going to create an elastic pool and deploy databases into it. And I'll explain further in that lab. So that's it for this lecture. In this lecture, I have provided a brief overview of Azure SQL database, different deployment models, and also purchasing models. And within that purchasing models, I have taken you through different service types. And finally, we have talked about logical server and elastic pools. Next lecture is a lab where I'm going to create a logical server and deploy a database into it and also go through some of the configuration items within Azure portal. Okay. So if you have some time, join me in the next lecture.